In Matthew 4, there's a very important passage that explains everything you see around you. Because it's the fulfillment of a prophecy from Isaiah chapter 9. In fact, let's look at Isaiah 9. Keep your finger there in Matthew. Back to the book of Isaiah chapter 9. This is a passage you often hear at Christmas time. Because it talks about, in verse 6, it says, Unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. But often we miss the first two verses. Again, because it's so easy to want to run to the meat that Christ the Savior is born, that we miss this wonderful prophecy as to what's going to take place where you're sitting. Here's the prophecy. Isaiah, about 700, 750 years before Christ was born. Nevertheless, there will be no more gloom for those who were in distress. In the past, he humbled the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali. But in the future, he will honor Galilee of the Gentiles. This whole area it's uh, Zebulon and Naphtali. Why was Zebulon we're Nazareth? Zebulon right now, Naphtali is just All right, we're in Zeb Zebulon right now. Naphtali is where Nazareth is located. So this Messiah grows up in Nazareth, and he comes to Zebulon. <clears throat> we'll honor Galilee of the Gentiles by the way of the sea along the Jordan. Here's the sea. Later on, we'll be standing in the Jordan. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of the shadow of death, a light has dawned. Now keep that in mind. A great light, those in spiritual darkness will see this great light who claims to be the light of the world. All right, now let's look at Matthew 4. 700 plus years later. Matthew 4 and verse 12. When Jesus heard that John, referring to John the Baptist, had been put in prison, he returned to Galilee. Leaving Nazareth, he went and lived in Capernaum, which is by the lake in the area of Zebulun and Naphtali, to fulfill what was said through the prophet Isaiah. And here's a quote from Isaiah 9. Land of Zebulun and land of Naphtali, the way to the sea along the Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles. The people living in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of the shadow of death, a light has dawned. From that time on, Jesus began to preach, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is near. Now, when Jesus came down from Nazareth, he came through that path, that, that, that pass, the Valley of the Doves, right over there between Mount Arbel and what is right across. That's the way he would have come. All right, that's Matthew chapter 4. When you get to Matthew chapter 5, we begin a sermon that is three chapters long. Now, all the other Gospels, uh, a number of the Gospels contain parts of this sermon, but only Matthew gives you three chapters of the sermon that was preached here in this hill. The sermon starts in chapter 5, 6, and 7. When you get up to around chapter 8 or so, there's a man by the name of Levi down here at a tax booth and is taxing people. And Jesus comes by and says, follow me. Levi gets up, leaves his life of taxing people and follows Jesus. Levi's name is Matthew. He is the one who wrote this gospel that we are reading. And I was wondering, why don't the other gospel writers put the whole sermon in? I think it's because Matthew, this Levi, when Jesus said, follow me, that's not the first time he met Jesus. It's very possible that Levi was sitting right here where you're sitting. He heard the sermon. And so he wanted to record everything that Jesus said. 
Because we know in the Gospels when Jesus comes along and sees uh, uh, Andrew and Peter in the boat, and he says, follow me, they get up and follow him. Well, we know that they have been with him for about a month or two, maybe even longer. So that wasn't the first time they met him. So when he tells Matthew to follow him, Matthew, I'm convinced, had been following or had been seen, had been hearing. It's very possible that the man who wrote this book, this gospel, was sitting where you're sitting.